This lecture will be on cellular organelles. So the objectives of this lecture are to be able to define nucleus, mitochondrion, endoplasmic reticulum, including both smooth ER and rough ER, ribosomes, Golgi apparatus, vesicles, lysosomes, cytoskeleton, and flagella and cilia. Be able to give a function for each one of the above organelles and be able to define, as mentioned above, and be able to diagram the different organelles and explain how the cytoskeleton serves as both support and movement. So in class, we will also be drawing and labeling these organelles, and I would advise you to do that on your own. First off, what are organelles? Well, we can imagine organs as different parts of our body that each have specific roles. The stomach has one role, the brain has another. In a similar way, within a cell, there are different roles. And these are not specifically analogous to a body's role. For example, there is not necessarily a cellular stomach or a cellular brain, but there are parts of a cell that do very specific things. And the function of these organelles are essential to understanding what cells do and how cells work. For example, protein synthesis occurs when hereditary information, DNA, is transcribed into messenger information, RNA, in the nucleus, and then RNA will go to the rough ER where it is translated into a protein, and those proteins will be shipped from the rough ER to the Golgi apparatus and through vesicles to other parts of the cell. And this is cellular functions occurring in organelles. The cytoskeleton is essential for muscular movement. So when we look at muscles later on, we're going to focus in on parts of the cytoskeleton and how they make a cell change its shape. The mitochondria, of course, as you know, is the powerhouse of the cell. We're going to take a deep dive into that in a later lecture about how the mitochondria is used for metabolism. Here are all, all the organelles writ large. So we see here a cell with a whole bunch of organelles in it. We also see things such as the cytosol, which is a semi-fluid gel membrane in, material inside the cell in which everything else is suspended. And I want you to be able to label these. If I were to take this exact picture on a test and point to something, you should be able to know what it is representing. I won't use that blacked out diagram you saw earlier. And describe how there are relations between different things in here. Uh, one of the things I'm going to focus in on in this lecture, and indeed in the questions following it, is protein manufacturing and how proteins are modified. So let's take just a brief tour before going into more specifics. So the peroxisome destroys cellular toxic waste. It uses an enzyme called catalase to destroy certain reactive species that are produced as a byproduct of metabolism. Centrioles are microtubular structures involved in cell division. When we cover mitosis, we are going to be focusing in specifically on centrioles. The cytoskeleton is that aforementioned structural framework of the cell. The smooth endoplasmic reticulum, or smooth ER, is the primary site where macromolecules are synthesized. These are macromolecules specifically not proteins, things like starch. The rough endoplasmic reticulum, or rough ER, is a primary site where proteins are synthesized by ribosomes, which translate RNA into protein. The Golgi apparatus refines, packages, and ships macromolecular products, including the proteins that are being made in the rough ER. Secretory vesicles come off of the Golgi apparatus and secrete proteins to the outside world. Ribosomes are the sites of protein synthesis. These are found in the cytosol and on the rough ER. The plasma membrane, as we mentioned in a previous lecture, is around the entire cell and controls what goes in and out. A specialized vesicle known as a lysosome can digest damaged organelles and cellular debris. The mitochondrion produces energy in the form of ATP for the cell, and the nucleus is the information center for the cell containing the DNA. So now that we've looked at these very briefly, let's take a look at each one in specific. First off, the nucleus. The nucleus contains DNA. And as you remember, DNA is what we use in heredity. So this is the center of heredity. It is isolated from the rest of the cell by a nuclear membrane. In fact, we are going to find that all of these organelles are separated from other organelles by membranes. So membrane-bound organelles, as we mentioned earlier, are part of a eukaryotic cell. 
The pores in this specialized nuclear membrane let out RNA messages, which we translated into proteins by ribosomes. Ribosomes are in fact made by a subpart of this called the nucleolus. The mitochondrion is the powerhouse of the cell. Okay, let's break that down into what it actually means. It creates ATP, adenosine triphosphate, or as we mentioned previously, this currency of energy used in the cell. It creates this through a process known as cellular respiration, specifically the citric acid cycle, the electron transport chain, and oxidative phosphorylation. Sounds like a lot? It is, and we're going to cover it in a later lecture. That's what happens in the mitochondria. ATP is made. CO2 is also released by the mitochondria. And you notice oxygen, O2, is used by the mitochondria. When you breathe, the ultimate destination of oxygen is often the mitochondria. The endoplasmic reticulum, or ER, is, well, there are two types of it. There is the rough ER, which is studied by ribosomes. Ribosomes translate RNA into proteins. And the rough ER uses these for protein manufacturing. A lot of the RNA that comes out of the nucleus is going to go to the rough ER. Some of it will go to the cytosol where free ribosomes will translate it into proteins that are used in the cytosol. There is also, separate from the rough ER, the smooth ER, which synthesizes other macromolecules such as starches and detoxifies things. In the liver, there are certain proteins present in the smooth ER that detoxify things such as alcohol. The Golgi apparatus is used to sort and ship different things. So if we were to think of the Golgi apparatus in terms of, say, um, manufacturing, the nucleus contains the instructions for manufacturing something. Think of it like a server or database that contains the instructions for manufacturing a wide variety of different things. If, say, it wanted to manufacture a chair, it would send out these instructions for making a chair to the factory. The factory is the rough ER, where the ribosomes will translate RNA into protein, and they will do the factory jobs of making a chair. This will then be transported in a vesicle, think like a semi-truck, to the Golgi apparatus, which is like the Amazon warehouse of the cell. So the Amazon warehouse of the cell sorts out these chairs from other things made in the factory and will sort out this chair for a specific destination, say this classroom or the room in which you are currently listening to this lecture. And that chair will be then shipped in a vesicle somewhere else. But the Golgi apparatus, like an Amazon warehouse, tags things to be shipped to different locations depending on where they are needed. So this is what gives proteins their destinations. Some of them will be put into lysosomes, and those lysosomes are going to be digesting things. So a protein that digests stuff will be put in a lysosome to do the job of digesting. A protein that needs to be secreted will be put in a vesicle for secretion. The enzyme catalase will be put in a peroxisome, and these are different types of vesicles. They are containers for shipping, made by the Golgi apparatus to be sent into places. There are two specialized types of vesicles we're going to look at, and one of those is a peroxisome. It uses catalase to do specific metabolic processes to various toxins. Lysosomes will digest damaged cellular components. There are also secretory vesicles, which are going to go to the outside world. But if a protein needed to be sent to the nucleus, it will actually be sent in a vesicle from the Golgi apparatus back to the nucleus because the nucleus does not make or ship its own proteins. The cytoskeleton is what maintains a cell's shape. This is made by various microtubules and microfilaments. And these are proteins that are put together to serve as sort of highways for protein trafficking and vesicle movement. The vesicles don't simply drift around and hope that eventually they're going to reach the right place. No, they travel on these microtubules and microfilaments to their destination. Some of these are actually anchored to the cell membrane through integral proteins or peripheral proteins that are anchored themselves to the cell membrane. Outside of the cell, we have cilia and flagella, and these will move cells 
through the medium. Specifically, remember, these have to be outside the cell to do any movement. And not all cells are going to have cilia and flagella. The cells in your lungs are actually going to have, well, some of them are going to have cilia to move mucus around. A sperm cell has a flagella to move it through the medium. And these are similar in structure to centrioles, which I'm mentioning here because it's similar in structure. Centrioles are found inside a cell, and they're these microtubular structures that are involved in cell division that we will cover later in mitosis. So these are the different organelles that we'll find in a cell. Please remember to perhaps draw these on your own if you have the time, and label the picture of the cell in your homework properly. Remember that you will need to define a role for each one of these on a test.